pleased to be able to talk about a project that I never thought I would actually get done. This box that you see here uh, contains the control electronics for my CNC milling machine conversion. Uh, and for the last three years, really, I've been running with various lashed up um, boards, controllers, wires, power supplies, uh, sitting on top of a bench. And they were exposed uh, to getting metal chips in them and, you know, knocked with tooling and who knows what. Um, I have kind of evolved my electronics design over the last few years as well, starting out with a simple parallel port uh, implementation that most people do. And I've moved up to um, having actually the full control computer, uh, an FPGA motion control card, and a custom uh, card in here that uh, I designed that is a sort of a breakout board with some other uh, features on it. So the electronics are packaged inside of an off-the-shelf uh, rack mount project case that you can buy online. Uh, I think I got this one on eBay, but uh, you can buy them at Jameco or lots of other companies sell these kind of things. It's like $60, $70, and basically you get a breakdown uh, case that has top, sides, front, back panel. They're all blank, and uh, they're all meant for you to do all the work to put your project inside of them. So here you can see this with the cover removed. Um, there's a lot of stuff packed into this little enclosure. The front panel is quite simple. We've got a power on off switch which turns on and off the computer and the FPGA card and control electronics but not the high voltage power supply for the stepper drivers or the spindle driver. We have an e-stop loop uh, management section basically. The LED indicates when the e-stop um, latch has, is triggered and the red button allows you to reset it once all the e-stop conditions have been cleared. And then next to that is the classic big red e-stop dome switch. And then the only last thing we have on the front panel here is a voltmeter, which basically is kind of a frivolous add-on, but it shows the, um, the voltage that's on the DC power supply, which is fed to the stepper motors. Now the back panel is obviously quite a bit more complicated and busy. Start off kind of logically speaking, we have two AC power inputs here and here. And the reason that there are two is that I wanted to split out the high voltage section, basically the toroid transformer and the spindle drive, from the low voltage section, uh, which is the computer and the FPGA card and that kind of thing. Uh, this section actually goes through a contactor and a number of other things that allow the computer to turn it on. This power supply actually gets turned on from the switch we saw earlier on the front panel. We've got the back end of a 3.5 inch form factor single board computer poking out here. These are the IOs for your typical computer stuff. There's a VGA port for display. There's two Ethernet ports on this particular board even though one is only really necessary couple of USB ports and there is a serial port here for use for who knows what I've used it for a touchscreen for some experiments and it's just available for for various purposes the next section of uh, connectors here all relate to connecting back to the milling machine itself so on this big Centronics connector which is an old-school printer port if you remember those uh, this actually carries all the logic signals from the control electronics case over to the milling machine. And this has, thanks to the uh, breakup board that I designed, this has differential signaling for the homing signals, uh, for spindle uh, index, and all kinds of stuff like that. These are the outputs of the X, Y, and Z stepper controllers. And these are done with Neutrik these are actually used in the audio industry. These are uh, Neutrik clone speaker connectors. Uh, the, the real Neutrik connectors are really nice, but I got some inexpensive Chinese clones off of eBay. Um, but they're, they're keyed, they're positive locking, which I thought was really an important feature. So you put them in, you can't pull them out, and it requires the use of this little metal uh, lever to allow you to pop it out. I do have provision for an additional 
axis here, uh, which I'm, I've got currently labeled as the A axis, I wanted to make sure I at least went through the steps now to put in the connectors and things like that because it makes life so much easier later on. The last major connector you see here on the back is the spindle drive. So the output from the DC motor controller, which runs the spindle here, um, basically outputs between 0 and 90 some odd volts DC to control the DC motor that runs the spindle. That comes out on this connector and allows me to disconnect it from the box and move it around as necessary. Now let's take a look inside the unit and see what it took to jam all of this stuff into this small box. When we look inside the unit, you can see that there is some method to the madness. On this side, it's primarily power supply. The DC power supply for the stepper motors is uh, handled with this Antec P68N48. Um, it's a 48 volt uh, DC power supply, big toroid, and a small board that has a rectifier and the filter capacitors. What we're looking at here uh, is the KBIC 125. Um, it's vertically mounted. Basically, there's a couple of screws just holding it to the, to the floor of the enclosure. This is a nice little DC motor driver. Um, it's a great upgrade from what was on my X3 milling machine to begin with. Uh, has nice ramp up, ramp down control. Um, takes basically zero to or minus ten to plus ten volt input to control the spindle all the way from full reverse through stopped to full speed forward. The only downside to it is that you do have to isolate uh, any connections to it because it leaves the entire uh, input stage floating at something like sixty to eighty volts. So I designed this little board here. Uh, I think I talked about it in an earlier video. Uh, this has its own um, little DC to DC converter on it, and it's just got some op amps on it that convert a PWM signal coming from the control electronics to plus minus 10. I wanted a way to turn on and off the AC power going to not only the toroid, but also the spindle drive controller. And what I ended up doing was using an industrial contactor, which is basically just a big chunky relay. You can actually hear it um, right here. The contactor itself has a 125 volt coil on it, so I could not directly just control that with a logic signal from the, uh, from the computer board. So what I ended up doing, because I just happened to have one lying around in my junk pile, was use a grossly over spec solid state relay. It's this orange thing you can see down here. Uh, that takes a, I don't know, 3 to 30 volt DC signal and will turn on and off an AC uh, signal, basically. This single board computer is actually uh, upgraded from the one that I had uh, last winter that I talked about. Um, that was a single core Atom. Uh, it had the downside that it did not have a parallel port directly on it, and I had created a kind of crazy little PCI Express um, adapter card to allow me to plug in a PCI Express parallel port card into it. This board is a dual core Atom, which is great. That gives me a little bit of a speed boost. Um, it has almost all the other same features. It's got a compact flash slot that I've got Linux running on. Um, this is an off-the-shelf um, Mesa 7i43. It's basically a Xilinx FPGA that runs a particular um, set of code that Linux CNC supports and it allows the FPGA to, to do a lot of the, the low-level signal manipulation, um, generating step signals. It can read encoders uh, without having to burden the CPU with that. It's, it's, it's a nice little card. Um, out of that you basically get two giant 50-pin connectors uh, which connect over these two ribbon cables to the custom board that I designed and built last winter. This board is actually acting a lot like a breakout board that you can go out and buy commercially, but um, I didn't like the boards that Mesa was selling at the time. Um, I also just felt like designing a board because it had been a while and um, I could put in exactly the features that I wanted. It connects to the Mesa card, as I discussed earlier, and really mostly what it's doing is um, splitting out signals to different connectors. So. These blue connectors up here uh, go off to the stepper drivers, and we'll get to those later. 
Um, these two outputs uh, are PWM outputs that go, um, one of which is connected to go off to the spindle driver that we discussed earlier. Um, all these red, red boxes are little read relays. I have a very dumb logic relay based um, emergency stop circuit that I designed. I wanted to do it with um, no electronics basically, just do it with, with electromechanical devices to keep it as simple as possible. Um, there's some buffering. Um, I convert everything over to uh, differential signaling that goes over to the mill because it's in the proximity of um, noisy stepper signals and noisy spindle signals and all kinds of other stuff. I didn't want to corrupt single-ended uh, TTL signals with that stuff. This ribbon cable connects to the Centronics connector that we discussed earlier and that just plugs over into the back of the mill uh, where there's another breakout card that I designed. But this whole top panel here, basically, uh, is all mounted to a piece of 1 8 aluminum. Uh, there's a nice back panel cutout uh, that allows you to get to the single board computer connectors. And then everything else just is neatly strapped down and, and arranged to connect off to the various areas of the board that it needs to. On the back of the enclosure, uh, you'll see that I have made some decisions here that allowed me to hedge my bets a bit. I made a large cutout to allow a flexible back panel uh, to be created that, that slots in with these two screws. The reason I did that uh, is that I may change this computer board at some time in the future. I may come across a better board or this one may, may get fried for whoever knows what reason and uh, I'll need to take it out. What I don't want to have to do is take apart the entire rear panel and take all the connectors off and all that just to throw it back on the, the milling machine to make a new panel. All I have to do is unscrew this little panel and uh, I can modify it as necessary and then put it back. So you can see that I've got a large area. We're only using a small amount of it here, but that's fine. Uh, I may have some connectors I care to bring out and I can put them on that. Um, within that, there's a cutout that gives access to the single board computers um, connectors. So, let's take this apart a little bit so you can see what's going on underneath the plate that has all the control electronics on it. Now that we have this thing taken apart, can see that there's a lot more going on underneath the logic board. This aluminum plate that has all the um, logic electronics attached to it uh, is still unfortunately a little bit tethered by some power supply lines and that's actually the um, on off switch that comes from the front panel. I think I need to rethink that a bit and probably add in a couple more connectors at a minimum. The most important thing that's going on uh, probably on the lower level here, uh, is that this is where all the stepper drivers are mounted. Um, I've got an aluminum plate that I machined. This is actually one of the first pieces of metal I cut on the, um, the CNC machine. Uh, this mounts up to four um, Gecko footprint drivers. And these are G203Vs. Um, I have three of those for X, Y, and Z. The power supply wiring for all those um, basically gets handled down in some wiring channel over here um, and neatened up. There's a couple of screw terminals uh, under here. Basically, I just made a little um, little barrier strip kind of thing where I've got ground and 48 volts. All the stepper drivers connect back to that. The step and direction signals from, ultimately, they come from the FPGA and the breakout board. Uh, actually go through ribbon cables. Um, you may have seen those earlier. These little purple boards that here that are sticking up out of the connectors are a little custom design that I made. And they plug directly in to the pins, or rather to the screw terminals on the gecko drives, and they convert it to a 10-pin IDC style connector. Uh, and they have provision to put the current set resistor on there. Now these things can get a little bit warm uh, they get warm enough that it was a concern, so obviously my first attempt uh, was building this plate. And that helped a bit, but they were still getting pretty warm. Uh, I 
raided the pile of broken boards and stuff uh, and took out uh, a number of nice matching computer heat sinks. I chopped them up on my bandsaw and mounted them to the back side of this plate. So basically where each one of these steppers is, um, roughly speaking, there is a, um, a little square of heat sink. Uh, I found some more stuff useful out of the junk pile. I have these little tiny ball bearing um, fans that I installed and these basically uh, will pull air across the heat sink fins and sort of vent it into this area. This PC power supply happens to blow out in this case. So it's pulling air kind of roughly from over in this direction across those heat sink fins and then blowing it out the back. Um, I actually took this power supply apart and stripped out a lot of the extra wiring that wasn't necessary. I took off the ATX um, motherboard connector. Uh, I took off a number of the extra drive connectors and really just pared it down to the bare minimum. This board needs one of the four pin style Molex. You can see I'm just using standard PC stuff here. I had a lot of old adapters and things that I can that I was able to modify. Um, this connector in particular, this old floppy style connector, connects onto my breakout board and that's what gives that 5 and 12 volts. The fans have their own little breakout board here that I threw together just on some perf board. So I'm going to put this thing back together and we'll actually fire it up and take a look at it operating and uh, show you some of the other stuff that I've been working on. So from the front, the uh, power switch here actually will turn on the PC power supply and that will power up the logic section. So flip that switch, here a couple fans start whirring, eventually the PC fan starts coming on. You can see power LEDs on the FPGA board, some power LEDs on my breakout board. You can see the voltmeter on the front here is reading zero because that supply is not currently on. If you see on the front, um, the red LED is lit saying that it's in uh, e-stop lockout mode. And that's also what that red LED on the breakout board means. With the interface electronics turned on and Linux has booted up, uh, start up Linux CNC as we see here. And uh, we have to basically start out by clearing the e-stop condition. So had e-stop been pressed before, uh, that would need to be released. This could also have happened out at the mill end. You'll see that the LED is still indicating that uh, we're in an e-stop uh, lockout state. Hit the e-stop reset and uh, you see the LED went out and also within Linux CNC that it cleared over there. From within Linux CNC, I turn on the machine power. See that contactor turns on. And also we are now reading near 48 volts on the voltmeter on the front panel. Once powered up, homing the machine is very easy. Just hit the home all button. Z moves up, finds its stop. Then X and Y home at the same time. See those nice fast rapids, that's 270 inches per minute. That's actually a direct result of the new FPGA card driving the stepper controllers. Uh, I was not able to generate uh, pulses anywhere near that quickly when I was running straight off the parallel port. So this is quite an improvement. You might remember from one of my previous videos that I was working on a helical coupler clone to hook up an encoder um, to the spindle on the machine. In this box that you see sitting on top of my milling machine is basically the uh, latest version of that. There's a 512 count per revolution encoder in here, which is significant overkill. It just happens to be what I had. That wires back uh, to some IOs on the breakout on the rear of the machine, which I'll show you later. Um, and basically, this is not running directly off of the spindle, but as in that previous video, this is running off of a gear that's behind it. With the encoder hooked up to the electronics, um, basically needed to do some work in the HAL config files and um, the other configs in Linux CNC to convert those pulses basically into an RPM. And it's just a bunch of pretty simple math pretty much to convert some number of pulses per revolution with the gearing and all the other things that are going on. 
uh, into an RPM, and I'll provide the config files for that should you want to see that. Uh, to verify that it was working properly, I set up some Pi VCP control panel stuff. Uh, you can see over here on the right, there's a big tachometer. There's a spindle at speed indicator, which basically just tells Linux CNC, hey, the spindles actually reached the speed you just set. Uh, there's a spindle speed indicator just in a numeric form, and then above that is the, uh, the command. Uh, so basically, that's if you've got that in your G-code to say, hey, go to 2000 RPM, that's what that would be. Uh, I will run through um, some of the RPMs uh, range here just to give you an idea of how well it works. And periodically, I'll just turn on this, uh, this digital tack. This is what I used to verify that the math I had done uh, was correct. And you'll see that they do agree within, you know, a percent or so. Uh, it's not uh, critical that it's exact for a home machine, but, you know, I was trying to get as close as I could. So here we go. I'll start off at around 500 RPM and work my way up. So looking here at the rear of the X3 uh, converted mill, uh, you can see that I've done uh, a few things to it. Early on, probably within the first uh, couple of months of the conversion, I actually uh, wrote some of my earliest CNC programs to actually cut out these holes for these speak on style connectors, just like on the back of the control electronics that we looked at earlier. And uh, this is where the X, Y, and Z stepper motor controls come in. This cable strain uh, relief and uh, wire loom goes off to the x-axis stepper motor and the uh, homing switch for that axis. These compartments along the rear of the mill originally contained uh, the motor driver switches for turning the unit on and off, um, power input and output, all that kind of stuff were all mounted along this column. I gutted all of that out. I took out the X3 motor driver and put that in a box. I may sell that because it's probably useful to somebody. Um, took out a lot of the other junk that was in there. And what I did mount was my machine breakout board. Uh, this board actually connects back to the control electronics that we looked at before through the same style Centronics cable. And all it really does is take those differential signals that I pass along that cable and convert them back into single-ended. And then provide a bunch of screw terminals to connect the various items that we need connected. So the homing switches are connected over here. We've got some e-stop, uh, power LEDs. This is the spindle index um, RPM counter that we looked at a little bit. Uh, power LEDs, all that kind of stuff. I'll connect up in there. Um, what I need still to do is create a panel uh, that will cover this up and mount this connector. Uh, also mount the spindle motor um, connector so that it's all neatened up. At the moment it's a lot better than it had been. It had really just been lying down in a bunch of chips and other junk. And this is up and out of the way at least, but I do want to get that cover made. 